When you're authentic to who you are, everything else will fall in place. People are gonna love, they're gonna hate, but you never know who's watching. Everything I do, I want it to be as original as it can be. Somebody did it like this, I'm gonna do it with this much filler. Who comes back and rescues himself? This was our moment to let people know how we felt as a team. We revolutionized this game with our influence. Thank you, I appreciate this. You want your one of these? I'm good, KG. You want your ginger shot? I'm good, man, I'm good. I need some positivity today. I'm trying to cover this spread, and your vibe is off, G. What's wrong with my vibe? You got to get you one of these, G. Get to sip some of this positivity in your life, and boom! You see that? Spread's covered. Thank you, Mama. In a minute, G. Ha ha! So, Warren, I got the Wall of Fame here, man. If you could, man, bless us with his signature or anything inspiring. I appreciate it. So today I want to toast two things. Um, this is a moment of generosity, mm -hmm. and we're going to toast to uh, uh, hip hop being at 50, and uh, to the great Nate Dogg. Cool yes, indeed. I'm down with that. Now we're going to toast today with oh, yeah, the good stuff. Pour this mug out, oh, right? This the good stuff. A southern classic. A southern classic, classic. Oh yeah. You understand? Not too much, this. not too much, not too much. Little, little light song, right? Well, should I do little this one more? I should have, you little know light. what, I think I messed up. Light uh, song, what? I should have did the right hand. It's all good. You can't mess this up. Okay, well, I'm you know saying. what I'm saying? Okay. But this is toast, man. Yes, indeed. Feel me? To you guys, man. Cheers. Oh, yeah. 50, baby. Mmm. Man, that was smooth. Man. Wow. Ooh. Now what is this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, we gonna need a couple more of these. That was good. That was good. <laughs> right, God fuck? damn. This is the extra rare. It says that the extra rare age, this age 18 years. Yeah, that wasn't no apple. That was something else. Yeah, this is that that had like a little something on it. Yeah. That had the little, that little, that little, that uh that candy lady uh. Yeah, flavor. that was different. Yeah, that, that was a different flavor. That's one of them flavor flavors. But I say, I, I'll, I'll say, um, uh, for music, man, mm -hmm. what part of music for me, you know, athletes getting ready to play, mm -hmm. music, music was everything. Um, yeah. I've never created any music, but I was always curious on how you go into creating music for a movie. I heard you say you got two uh, mm -hmm. uh, songs on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I was a person who looked at certain music for certain fuel, certain ways of going out and playing yeah. uh, to that energy of the music. Talk about creating that music, though. I didn't um, even get in the mindset of that. I mean, it's, it's, it just happens. Like, mm. we could be, like how we're conversating right now, we may say something that'll give me an idea and I immediately mm. jump on it. Um, just like with Poetic Justice, um, when I did Endo Smoke, well, I had, well, they liked Endo Smoke for the soundtrack, gotcha. but it fit right in because that the scene that it was in was a scene where uh, Tupac pulled up uh, and he had beef with Tone Lope, yep, who played in the movie that. with the baby mama. Yep. So Endo Smoke was being planned while they was pulling up, mm. you know, like doing, you know, coming to get at Tupac. and uh, Setting that tone, setting yeah, that scene, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's it's just when, when we get in the studio, like it's just it just happens, man. I can't explain like how it all like some some things we'll have a concept on, gotcha. But a lot of it we don't. It's just cool. like how we talking right now, like how you said another flavor, right? You know that if it was a name to it, it, it could turn into a song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That that's that that's that da da da. -da. Mm, that's the da, 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 mm. with the da 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 da. Gotcha. Da, 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 da. Yeah. We sipping on the, age you know what I mean? Gotcha. That's yeah, so extra it, age. It, yeah, the extra age. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it happens, you know. And it, and uh, and it, it really uh, that's 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 it's it's just like you say, good vibes. Mm. 
and it, it, and it turns into music for us. And being an athlete and a musician, we go through the same thing because yeah. I, what I, before I go perform, I listen to music. I listen to like stuff in my era. I listen to the young guys. I listen to, to jazz. Mm -hmm. I listen to rock and roll. Uh, I listen to, to uh, 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 reggae, everything. Mm -hmm. That's all in my playlist. And that's what gets me pumping, gets me moving to go out there and do my thing. Oh, wow. You know, and then once I come back in, Fire the music up again, and it's time to, to chill, eat, mm. and get ready to move on to the next city. How many years is this uh, for you, being in music? Uh, 30. Wow. Yeah. 30 it's years, 30. Uh, and I, I don't feel like it shit. I feel like, I'm, even, even though I'm an older artist now, I ain't super duper old, but right. just... Uh, I still feel like it's it's like I did when I did uh, Endo Smoke or, wow. or Regulate. Um, you know, people are always saying, you a legend, you a legend. I'm like, wow. I mean, okay, that's cool that you guys say that. Hey, thank you. But I'm still trying to do my music. I ain't done with this shit. I'm still doing music. I don't think I'll ever stop. Right. Because it's what I love to do and I, and, and I have fun with it. Uh, the business side is the side where, you know, if, you, if your business is not right, then that's when it get kind of kind of kooky. Mm. And you like, uh, shit. Right. <laughs> this shit, you know, it's, it's uh, but hey, it's, I love it. And um, just happy to be a part of it as far as the, the 50 years of hip hop and just being a fan and growing up and being a part of that era right. is like, it's, 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 yeah, it's everything, and uh, I don't think it's going to ever be no shit like our shit, Kev. I ain't going to lie. It's, it's <laughs> These scary. young kids, they, they shit is way different. It's, it's, they'll never have the fun, the excitement, the, the shit we've had. That's what uh, I imagine. Unless they change, they got to, the, well, the internet kind of changed that, changed that a little bit, but... Yeah. Uh, Here's the 30 years, man. Yes, indeed. You feel me? Yes, indeed. My dog. <laughs>well, I want to thank you for coming on here, Warren. I, I know time good, is valuable. Kendrick. I know you doing a thousand things these days. It's dope to, to have you on here, man. Thanks for um, having me. Nah, no doubt. Um, I wanted to ask you right off the top, man. Hip hop turning 50, man. That's crazy, man. I know, I know you from Long Beach growing up. Yeah. I know you grew up around music. Could you talk a little bit about just your early, you know, relationship with hip hop and coming into it, and you know, with R and B and what you grew up yeah. listening to and all that? Yeah, just just being around the neighborhood and and you know, back then the DJ was mm. our connection to you know, learning about all of the underground music, everything. So mm. just being around the, the DJ world where you know you had the uh, world class wrecking crew, you had this. Uh, DJ crew together. Uh, oh, word. Early the on, stereo man. crew. Okay. Uh huh. And um, just being around that and listening to underground music and and the and like artists like Run DMC, yeah, BC Boys, and even like Cool Mo D and the you know uh, Cool Herc and and Busy B and those types of guys. Just yeah. hearing all of that music uh, and to to now being a guy who. <clears throat> They kind of they say there's a legend in it, and and uh, it's 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 incredible because I learned from all of them, and that's what made me who I am, and and it you know it's got me to the status that I am now, uh, just being a part of the the beginning uh, parts of hip hop, even just listening to them, and then being around, being a, having a chance to hang with uh, Eazy -E and 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 Dre and. Some of the you know all of the 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 uh, the, the vest Ice T and, right, and Dub right. C and, and you know all those right. guys from back in the day, Coolio, all those guys. So I like to think that all the OGs that actually started when you, when you guys are listening to the music that that is coming out commercially, mm -hmm. uh, the Rock This Way with Run DMC, mm -hmm. they mixing it with Rock, some of the hybrids, some of the things that kind of go away a little bit from hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, you know guys rapping on it, the battling. Um, the one-on-ones and stuff like that. 
Were you guys hearing a lot of the commercial stuff that was obviously coming from the East Coast? Were you guys hearing that, trying to form a West Coast version of that or create your own version of that? Or was it just where it was going and what it felt like? It was just where it was going and what it felt like. Mm. And it just, just inspired us to just do music, you know what I mean? Right. But we did it in a, in a, you know, West Coast style, like no our doubt. way, like more live instrumentation. Even though it was a lot of live instrumentation coming from the East Coast, but we were heav heavily inspired. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just being at, just watching B Street. For her. Um, mm -hmm. Crush Groove, you know, movies like that. Uh, even, uh, the, even the miseducation of, uh, what is it, oh, Sonny, yeah. uh, Sonny Carter? Oh, Sonny Carter, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Even Hell, just, yeah. you know, yeah. that stuff was, was like, that was what was coming out of, out of, from New York, and that, we loved that. We loved that. And, uh, you know, just those movies, because it had a hip-hop vibe to it, you know. And all of that stuff just inspired us, along with having the Dream Team and uh, Arabian, uh, not Arabian Prince, but, uh, uh, God damn it, I, I'm, that's going, uh, Egyptian Lover. Mm. Uh, who These was classic. These probably... Classics. The, the major pioneer from the West was Egyptian Love because he was dealing with the East Coast mm -hmm. way before a lot of guys, a lot of the OGs from California was even out. Um, and, and the, the L.A. Dream Team, uh, Ice-T, mm -hmm. um, those guys was, was vets. I was sitting up there. B Street, was, that was that shit. It was. You know, they, they, they showed the, the grimy shit where they was in the... In the in the broken down buildings, yep. setting up the party through yep. the electricity. We wasn't doing that shit. Mm. I learned you all know, that. We, 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 <laughs> that was that was dope. That's how they was doing it, pulling it in, yeah. bringing it from other stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that was originals, man. And, and oh, two, yeah. when I'm sitting here thinking about it, man, like guys like Ice T and WA, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. early, those early depictions of style, man, started giving like the the West Coast like an edgier style than the East Coast, yeah. wouldn't you say? Y'all yeah, was still storytelling, I mean, but y'all was more talking about what was going on in the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gangbang was at an all-time high. No doubt. And uh, the artists at that time was just, you know, like N.W.A. and, and Easy and everybody. They was just letting everybody know this is this is what's going on here, right. and this is our version of this is all we can put out because this is what we're going through. Mm. And it was it was really gang. Influenced, right? You know, with just along with uh, police brutality. Did you did you see? Because <clears throat> you was in early parts of of the depiction of what West Coast music would be labeled as. But I remember I remember rap being very inspiring. I remember Poor mm -hmm. Righteous mm -hmm. Teachers, mm -hmm. Tribe yeah. Called Quest. It used yes, to be it used to be a uplifting of a of a sound. Yeah, they and like then all so. of a sudden, I, I, I forgot about all that shit. Like. I mean, you was around when. Talk a little bit about that era. Yeah, I was in that. Yeah, I was in the De La Soul era. The, you know, the, uh, Poor Black teachers, Sheep, Poor yeah, Righteous yeah, Teachers, yeah. uh, uh, Q-Tip, and, and Fife Dog. Them was my guys. Even leaders of the new school, Five Busta Lisa Rhymes. New and school, yeah. We yeah. was Busta Rhymes and them used to come to the West Coast, and me and Snoop would go up to the La Mondrian. Mm. Him and Charlie Brown and all them, we smoke them out. <laughs> Blow them down. You know, yeah. You know, just showing the West Coast hospitality. Word. Um, no matter who it was, Apache, who had Gangsta oh, Bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, Apache. Uh, Latifah and them. Everybody, when they came out here, we embraced them and, and just let them know how much we, we loved them because they inspired us. Wow. You know, so that that whole, man, Poor Righteous Teachers, uh, Tribe Called Quest. Actually, We Got the Jazz is mm -hmm. one of the, the records that inspired me. Yeah, we got like the period jazz. as a as we a, a hip-hop yeah. producer, as a MC. Mm. Um, you know, I ain't no heavy MC. I'm I'm just a, a storyteller, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh but uh the, all that stuff inspired me and, and <clears throat> just being in that era and then it turned into, you know, uh 187 on a motherfucking cop and and I right. mean that it was all it was still all yeah around the same times because me and Snoop was listening to Special Ed and mm -hmm. uh, Second Shade of Red uh, 
uh, Redhead Kingpin. Redhead Kingpin. Uh, these are all classics right here. Go look all these up. These yeah. are all classic <laughs> classics. You feel and, me? Uh, um, but still, like 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 we was talking about earlier, what comes out of you is where you are, Fires. where you at, you know. And we was in Long Beach, California at that time, mm -hmm. uh, on 61st and Linden, uh, hustling. Right. You know, just trying to make some some bread as some young young teens, just trying to make some bread, just caught up in the the same old hood shit. Right, the one twos yeah. of the day. Yeah. Right. Man, for the playoffs, you can hit the court with a special offer, courtesy of KG Certified and BetMGM, the king of sports book. Ha <laughs> ha! Place a one game parlay with four legs or more, and get back a bonus bet up to twenty five dollars if you miss one leg. Man, nothing beats a W at Bedham GM. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about the Dre effect, man. You know, Dre coming from MWA, all mm -hmm. this knowledge, all this impact. He obviously <clears throat> set the wave almost, like, mm -hmm. right? You know, Dr. Dre don't really get enough credit to me. Yeah. You know, when you start to establish, like, style and mm -hmm. you start, like, mm -hmm. implementing, like, how people do things, obviously it comes from Ice-T, it comes from guys before them. Yeah. And um, he was talk working about the with them then, huh? Dre, Dre, I think produced uh, had some something to do with the production of Colors. Mm. I know he had. Uh, he was also a producer with the. I don't know if you ever heard of the Battle Ram. Oh. The Battle Ram, yeah, boom, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun. You oh. can't stop it, baby. The Battle Ram. Wait, yeah, Dre. See, see? Uh, I'm, I'm a DJ Paul. We're gonna look this up. <laughs> <clears throat> I got to, y'all got that, right? We noted that. We got that name, noted oh, yeah. and slated. Okay, boom, I'm going to look that up. I got to look that up. It's called The Battle, what? The Battle Ram. Mm. And who was that by? That was by Toddy T and Mixed Master Spade. Mm. I think Dre, uh, DJ Pooh, I think they all was all co-producers in that. Pooh, Quick, they don't get enough credit, dog. Yeah. You don't never hear, when you talk about pioneers of style, you never hear Pooh, you never hear Quick. Why is that, quick you think? Is, is, Quick is dope. Pooh is dope. Um, I guess they, they, you know, they just, you know, just don't really be looking for a lot of publicity. They just right. want to do. They want their music to speak for, you know, for right. them. Uh, but they, they dope. You know, you know, um, they're my guys. Right. No <laughs> doubt, man. I love. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about them early days with two one three, man. Talk about. Your first group, that was your first group, yeah, 213, yeah, Snoop you, and Nate, Dogg, and Snoop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How'd that come together? Uh, well, we, we've known each other all our lives, um, uh, elementary school and church. Uh, so as we got older, like I said, when we was in our young teens, me and Snoop was over on 61st Street. We was hustling, mm. you know, doing th different things and moving around and, uh, we we was actually doing music then, you know. We just, you know, was just doing it just for the homies. Mm. It wasn't for the masses. We was doing it for the homeboys, the neighborhood, and everybody just to party to. And uh, so one day, you know, Snoop and Nate had, was was at Poly together doing music, and Nate had went off to the Marines. So after he got out, he had heard about us doing music. So. Mm. One day we was on the spot and Nate pulled up uh, on 61st Street, you know, uh, pulled up on us and then we, from there we just started, just started doing music and Snoop was like, he's still singing. He was like, yeah. So we just started collaborating and just started doing music together. Three, three geniuses, mm -hmm. all bringing a whole different flavor to yeah. it, man. We went and did our first demo uh, with, uh, with DJ Money B from, from Long Beach. Um, that's when we we had a, uh, actually, you know what, remember we were just talking about Quick, but he and, Quick inspired us as well. I was about to say, man. He man, had an underground tape that was, was out. Say, it was crazy. That shit was hard in the motherfucker. Man, so Quick was that's, hard. Yeah, so that's, that's what made us do the underground tape mm. thing, you know, so that's when we formed 213 and we, we, we did our, our demo with Money B, and it was called Long Beach is a Motherfucker. Oh, wow. That motherfucker hard to this day. I should straight have brought up. it up here. Damn. Straight up, straight up. Mm -hmm. Long Beach is a motherfucker. So, so I gotta, so I gotta even say this, man. So, mm -hmm. if we fast forward, a mm -hmm. lot of your friends go to Death Row. Right. Mm -hmm. You end up signing with Def Jam. Yeah, yeah. Now you got to take us through the story of. I think I've heard the story, uh, but I want, I want to hear this story right here on Certified. Like, 
I mean, it, I, w- I was there, uh, did a lot of work with, you know, with Dre and, and, and Snoop, Every, our whole crew, we all was there working and doing our thing. And then once things kind of blew up a little bit, um, tours started and things like that, um, you know, it was time for people to have their roles. Yeah. And my role was I was a producer slash DJ. Uh, and I would I would rap too, but you know, when it came time to start moving, you know, I wasn't involved. Mm. You know, I wasn't being invited into the tour or, you know, whatever was going on. So, you know, it it, it kinda had me upset. So And fuck with the friendship a little bit between you uh, and uh, it, everybody else? I mean, it didn't really fuck with the friendship. Um I just didn't didn't uh I didn't know how to to uh accept a blessing pretty much because mm. Dre must have seen something that I wasn't seeing as far as just being around mm. uh you know getting myself caught up in a situation you know cuz I was pretty much I was a live wire around that time and I I was you know down you know really down to do whatever right and uh and uh, he he pretty much seen that pretty much and was just like, man, you need to go on and be your own man. Mm. You know, it hurt. You know, I was upset a little bit. Um, but I went, went and did my own thing. I went back to sleeping on the floor. Uh, had my MPC 60. I had my Crater Records. Um, and just started producing. Just started doing my shit again and, wow. and started you know, making songs with, with other artists outside of the guys that I was with, wow. which that's how I came up with uh, Endo Smoke, mm. which was pretty much my first uh, production. Yeah. That was my introduction as a producer and an artist because oh, wow. I rapped on it and I produced mm. it. And I, you know, helped write with Grimm's uh, verse, even though Grimm is, he's incredible, but I helped out with, I gave him some of the flavor that we had. Gotcha. You know, like that H and R stuff, the puff in your lungs, right. smoking on the chronic, getting straight sprung. <laughs> That's that was our. That's that right. was a style that I that that I use that mm-hmm. that we all, you know, had around that time. That, uh, but um, that that actually uh, introduced me into doing endo smoke and also introduced me into producing Definition of a Thug for mm-hmm. Tupac. Yeah. Um, Cause I was at the studio, I came around after, you know, I was kind of like distant for a while. Uh, came to the studio and Drayden was working on a, on a, the, uh, actually the poetic just the soundtrack they was doing the record for. It. And uh, I bumped heads with Paul Stewart and, and John Singleton. And I was like, look, man, I was like a starving student. I was like, look, do you guys have any room on y'all soundtrack? You know, if you do, could you please listen to the song I got? So Paul was like, all right, I'll listen to it. I said, well, can we go to my car? So I, I had a burgundy regal. We went, sat in the regal. Um, I put the tape in, I started playing it, and it went for about maybe 15, 20 seconds, and Paul was like, boop. He's like, stop, stop, stop. So I stopped it, and, and he was like, <clears throat> I kind of looked at him like, like this motherfucker, okay, he, another motherfucker tripping, don't wanna, you know, gonna shoot me down. So he was like, "Can I take the tape with me?" I said, "Hell yeah, take it." He, he said, uh, "Just give me your number and I'll I'll pay you, you know, and let you know what we think." And so he what year hit, is this? What year is this? That was like ninety three, mm. ninety four, ninety not ninety three. It was ninety three. Ninety. What? It was like. And like 93, I think it was like, yes, yeah, 93. And what song was on the tape? The winner of 93. And what song was on the tape? It was Endo Smoke. Mm. And so I got a call that Monday and, and Paul Stewart was like, we want this to be our first single off the Poet of Justice soundtrack. And I was like, huh? He was like, yeah, we want this to be our first single. So I called Mr. Graham like, man, we got a single with uh, John Singleton and Paul Stewart over there at New Deal. Uh, so they want to meet with us. So we went up, had the meeting, everything was great. Oh, wow. Uh, did the deal with them. You know, we got some cheese out of it. And, 
And that, that was pretty much my first introduction to, as an artist and a producer, uh, into the music game. Yeah. Man, I was thinking about this the other day, man. It's been 12 years since uh, Nate been gone. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like 12? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it feels like it a lot mm. because when, I, you know, a lot, we, we worked together a whole lot more than everybody. Mm. Um, and he really understood my music, you know, as far as my production, and he knew what to do with it. And I say that, you know, sometimes when I work with artists, they don't really understand what's there. You know, Nate would understand and he'd dissect it and then he'll put the vibe to it. Mm -hmm. And the shit is a, is a classic. Uh, but some artists to the, today will be listening like, damn, okay, I'm trying to catch the vibe with this, and this. And it's like, mm. what are you thinking about? Just go. Wow. You know, but Nate knew what to do. And uh, just not having him around, you know, just to, to get down on, on certain records that I do or me producing for him or him, hearing him, you know, on a record with Snoop or Dre or, or you know, anybody in the industry is just like, wow, but we still hear it every day, all day, wow. year after year, ever since he died and before when we, when we put the record out, it's still, it's still going. So that's, that's what, uh, you know, it, it makes me feel good just to know that it, it's still keeping his name alive along with, with minds as well on um, what we did together as far as the Regulate uh, record. You know, we did that shit right in my apartment, a uh, little small apartment with no furniture, just a bed and my dog shitting everywhere and studio equipment in one room. And uh, we did that motherfucker right in there, you know. And from there, <laughs> you know, it... it uh, what was a trip was I was at the studio. Now, I, this is a whole nother no, story. No, it's all good. We following. Uh, I was up at the studio with Dre, uh, him and Mike Lynn. So I told Mike, I said, Mike, I got the song I want you to hear because I know I knew that they was doing the Above the Rim uh, soundtrack. So mm. Mike was all right, come on, let's go. So we got in the car once again, pushed the tape, and that, it was regulate. And, uh, it was finished. Played it. it was finished, or was yeah, it was finished. It, it was finished. Okay. Uh, it wasn't mixed, but it was a rough draft gotcha. of it. And uh, so it played. Mike was like, "This shit bang." He was like, "You let Dre hear this?" I was like, "Nah, I ain't let him hear it." Um, so he said, "I'm gonna I'm let Dre hear it, and I'm gonna let Jimmy hear it." He said, "And I'll get it. You know, I'll get back to you." So I, once again, like this was a CD. This actually oh, not a okay. tape, but a CD. So I gave him the CD, and. Uh, Warren, we want this to be a single, our single for uh, Above the Rim soundtrack. Damn. And that was Regulate. Damn. So I was like, damn. <laughs> you know, I want to say two days ago. Mm -hmm. So first off, Regulate is probably is one of those, one of those, one of them, one of them joints that is going to be forever in my top ten, forever, Thank right? You. Just vibe, just. I can throw that on, I can feel like I'm on PCH, I can, you know? Like I can, I can, I can give you moments in my life that I've had regulators be like the soundtrack to that, to those oh, moments, yeah. right? Oh yeah. You know, we got kids. Yeah. You know, our kids on all apps, TikTok, fucking all socials, right? Yeah. A kid is scrolling and she stops and she's, I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I can hear regulators playing. And says, dad, is your song? And I said, okay. <laughs> And in the middle of the song, it flipped country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, uh... Man, I was uh, in that motherfucker doing this one right here. Warren, you hear me? I was in there getting that Oh, home. yeah. Man, listen. I'm, first off, I'm a fan of all music. I don't give a fuck what it is. Afrobeat, fucking classic, jazz, yeah. everything, right? So I'm a fan. When they flipped country, bro, I think it flipped my country too. Like it, it, yeah. it, it, it flipped the country and me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah. I, that's the I know I'm. Yeah, yeah. I'm going and I'm, I'm being funny, but to, the point I'm making here is that, man, someone told me the biggest form of flattery is to be copied of someone to use your stuff or to inspire. Mm -hmm. When you hear, when you hear regulators, you hear those remixes. Like, like, where does it take you? 
Like, what are you thinking when you hear uh, this? When you heard the country version, what would it take you? I was like, that's, that's dope. They rock this. <laughs> I would say they rock. I was, that was like, it's dope. Dope actually, is dope, right? Actually, I uh, uh, just talked to uh, uh, Jennifer Horton, who's a, a, actually, we, we partnering up. That's, she going to start doing some work with me. Shout out to Jennifer management wise. That's what's up. Um, and she's tight with his people. He talked to his people and like, what do you guys want to do? Yo, you got so something there. I, I told them that I could do a, 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 a brand new version with new mm. verses to regulate for that. You know, if he wants his version of his parts to still stay as is, or he could do some new, new verses. And we just created a new regulate 2023. That'd be hard yeah, and yeah. needed. Yeah. We need good vibes right now. Man. Yeah. You get ready to go on tour? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Um, high school reunion tour, uh, me, Snoop, Wiz, and Too Short and Burner. Oh, wow. Oh, say a word. That's a, a smoke affair. Ooh. <laughs> t- tell, me, tell, me, tell, me, tell me a little bit about it. Where, where, where does it start? Where, do you know? um, we start off in Canada, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, and then from there, we do the Northwest, oh, and then wow. we ease over into the Midwest. And then from the Midwest, we go, uh, I think we start heading towards Pennsylvania, uh, Indianapolis, and then we do Brooklyn, uh, New Jer- I think we do two days in Brooklyn, then we do, I mean, uh, New Jersey, then we do a, a, a day in Brooklyn. And uh, we all over the place. Oh, it's it's a, a, two months to, a two month tour, oh, so wow. we're gonna be hitting like, everywhere and I'm gonna have fun man uh and tapping in with everybody in every city you You know on that barbecue the whole nine right 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 Mm -hmm. so 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 take me um like what's the what's the what's the what's the what's the constant with with tours like are they headaches are they nerve-wracking are you leading up to it like take me through I I know what sports is like we have a training Mm -hmm. camp Mm -hmm. to get ready for a season you go to season, you play the whole season, you got playoffs. Like, take me yeah. through a tour, though. How's it's the, the tour same like? thing. Really? Uh, it's the same thing. You, some you, you get you get you love doing it, but you get burnt out mm. sometimes with with some of the things that that you're doing. Uh, as far as partying every it's day, it's a lot, yo. It's a like lot. Like partying right? every day, you gotta you gotta get into that party vibe every day. Damn. And uh. You know, it's a lot of drinking and smoking. Uh, a lot of vibes. And, you know, yeah, just 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 a bunch of stuff like that that's constantly going on. And some as sometimes you get kind of burnt out on it. Um, I do. Uh, Are y'all collabing? Are y'all music? I know it ain't all partying. Are y'all working oh, no, a little bit? We, no, we we work. We work. Uh, everybody carries like a portable studio you can set up right in your dressing oh, yeah. room. Yeah. You know, with the with the as long as the music is already done and formatted, mm. you just pop your headphones on, get your booth up, start playing. Mm. Um, like I'll be like, short, I need a verse, or Snoop, I need this mm. whiz. Come on. Uh. But I'm actually uh working on a record uh right now for me, Snoop and Wiz. Oh wow. Uh to drop before we leave in July. I was gonna say, mm-hmm. in this situation when you have a tour, do you do you do you focus on new music <laughs> or do you is this your chance to put new music out? Uh, yeah, I definitely uh focus on new music and and it's just another uh vehicle to push that new music by yeah. being on the road. You can introduce them in the show, the new music as well, while it's on the radio playing, mm-hmm. getting people familiar with it. Um, they can see it as well, and then that that it works together. Oh wow! Yeah, I just did one with Lil Wayne too. That's that's pretty dope. Oh wow! That's what's Actually, up. that motherfucker's super dope. Say I'm gonna push play on you. <laughs> we got to go to the regal. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's dope. I mean, it's really dope. Now I gotta I gotta ask about what feels like. I know music is your love, but mm-hmm. man, bro, when I talk when I talk rubs and I talk. When I talk grilling, when I talk grilling to you and smoking and, and, and barbecuing, bro, you light up like a whole nother, bro. Like, what is the, I, I know you said your pops, <laughs> man, but this your true, this is your true passion right here. Like, yeah. grilling is your true passion. I mean, it's it's just fun. Um, it's a getaway um, because I don't have to deal with, like, any politics or any, mm. you know, any clearances or, anything like that. Right. I'm in my own world and 
and whoever's around, we just having a good time come and feeling good and, and just conversating like we are right now, just having a good time conversating and it's just a feel good, you know, and it just it just it's a, a an escape for me away from the the uh, the things that go on in the music business. Like for instance, me trying to get my masters back, you know, and it's been thirty years. You know, they've been juicing me that long. You know, I done put so many kids through college, high school, that bought so many houses for all these kids, and and all I ask you guys to do for me doing what I did by saving the company is to give me my masters back. That's the best gift you could give me. Mm. But they just juicing me still, so. Um, What's the process? It takes me away from all of that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Damn. Oh, What's yeah. this called again? This a 500 gallon, this a Moberg smoker. Moberg uh -huh. smoker. Y'all like, hey, listen, if y'all ain't, if y'all out there smoking, you ain't yeah. doing it like this, you ain't yeah. doing it. Yeah. This is that joint you pull up to the park on a Sunday. It's that Sunday joint. This that, I'm finna, I'm finna go ahead, I'm gonna wait on Warren, cook. We're gonna, we're gonna fall in, we're gonna eat this food, and oh, then yeah. boom, I'm out. I'm finna take a two hour, three hour nap. Oh yeah, yes indeed. Dang, how long you been cooking, man? I mean, my father used to cook at all the family reunions and get-togethers. He'd be barbecuing and all the good times and stuff they would have mm. is what made it mm. made me fall in love with right, it. So, right. so at I was these... like, shit. So I was doing it in the hood, at, uh, mm. on the spot, everywhere. Barbecuing, uh, whatever, whatever we could, you know. Even when we, when we in the studio, I go outside and barbecue while we're at the studio. Say word, just to, mm -hmm. just to, and, and that would create a whole nother vibe, yes, right? Yes, indeed. So what's these right here, Warren? These are my sausage and rubs. Oh, is this I what have, you was talking about earlier? Yes, indeed. I have the OG. Mm -hmm. I have the all-purpose. I got my smoking me out, my We Brings Heat, and then original. Um, really good sauces. Uh, flavor is, is different. Mm. You know, just trying to, like I said, I love to be different from everybody so when you taste it you'll be like oh what mm. is that i'm trying to think of what this is and i'm tasting but it's really good i came up with with, with something that i liked you know even my dad was saying different things you oh, know wow. uh like my my all-purpose some of my buddies from texas was was uh telling me about different things so i start researching on my own mm. uh getting books and seeing what flavors work together and then started putting putting flavors together. And then with the help of some of my good friends that are pit masters and chefs. Y'all got me all in thought, y'all. I know bullshit. Man, this shit is fire. <laughs> that's the rap. No, I didn't. Oh, man, know man, that's been certified oh, today, yeah. man. We had Warren G come in here and show us the whole joint from fucking rubs oh, to, yeah. to sauces to tangy to barbecue to hot. Man, y'all ain't ready. What's this shit say? Sniffing Griffins. Sniffing Griffins. Yes, Smoke me out. Oh, yeah. Slut these names. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> me out, we brings heat in the room. We ridges. brings heat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just want to ask you, man, what's the process in something like that? That's a long process? You're uh, fighting for something that you created and something that's technically yours? It's, it's been, a, it's, like I said, it's, it's 30 years, you know? Um, I haven't really started, I, I just started really, like, focusing on that, like, in the last maybe, like, 10 years as far as, you know, like, damn, why wasn't I thinking when I was younger about my masters yeah. and I could have done these deals while I still had ownership? within my masters. I own my publishing catalog. That's the biggest shit ever. Right. Um, you know, a lot of guys don't. Facts. You know, but the guys that do, you see these deals being made, like Dre. Facts. With the 200 and something. I think that's just for the chronic. Right. That ain't even his you whole joint, right. And if they come to me like, we want to do half of da-da-da-da-da, but I say, hey, we may be able to do that. <laughs> business is bu business. Is business. <laughs> yeah, but I, cause I still own, you know, you guys, hey, you guys just, you know, came in a little bit as a partner. Right. You have, know, but, uh. Have you ever thought about 
taking some of these young guns mm -hmm. and putting them under your umbrella and kind of giving them like a little script or whatever? Some All the, the time. Like a lot of the young artists, uh, um, B.G. Perico, uh, Zoe Summers, and you know, like all Glasses Malone, like these like underground artists here, mm -hmm. like that yeah. people really don't know about yet. Yeah. But a lot of, even the artists, even like Ty Dolla Sign, guys like that, a lot, a lot of these guys, they call me and, and ask me about all of this shit. And then I give them a, a blueprint of how oh, to move. Man. Like B.G. Perico called me and I, he was just like, Unk, you know, like what, what can I do to, to, you know, try to make my, my shit move better. I said, be different, you know, be different and quit talking about ops in every song. Uh, you don't have to do that in every song. Just tell, just paint a picture and tell your story. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's good, bad, whatever it is, just paint a, a whole movie, a picture. Mm -hmm. So people don't just have to hear you saying, well, I'm gonna do this or do that to some motherfucker all the time. I'm, what, that, people don't wanna hear that every day. We wanna feel good sometimes. You know, be different, you know? Like, myself, I talk some shit, you know, but then I, I, I still uh, spit some game at the same time as far as how I guide you in a direction where, a positive direction too, right. you know? But I talk some shit, cause that's some shit that I went through at that time, so. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you my whole, the story and the vibe of, of how I'm feeling or what I'm going through. And it's just like, I'm not no gang bang motherfucker like out rowdy and doing all kind of shit. I just told my story, just a young teen coming out of Long Beach, California, just trying to survive, just trying to be something in life. But I had to go through all of this shit to, to see and say that I don't want to be in this type of shit. I still fuck with you niggas. I right. love y'all. Right. I still fuck with all you guys, but I don't want to still be coming in the hood, hanging in the motherfucking hood. I love the hood and I give back all the time, but living in that motherfucker, hell no, nah, I'm trying to get the fuck away. And that's what I did. Right. And I still fuck with everybody, but shit, I pop through for 10 or 15 minutes each spot. I'm not going to sit there long, because if I sit there too long, I'm going to get myself in some trouble, so I got to get out of there. Right. You know, hey, we'll smoke a joint, we have a shot, whatever, boom, 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 smoke a joint, I'm gone. Deuces. Love you. Deuces. Love you. Deuces. Chuck and I'll deuces. be back, you know, because I don't want to fuck up my shit by shooting somebody or hurting somebody who don't know me, even though I don't go through that. Right. But I don't want to have to put myself in that position where I have to say, okay, Next one, you dude. tripping with me for what? You know, you don't even know me. Or somebody just on some bullshit, cause I'm blasting. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't like these other motherfuckers. Gotcha. And I ain't gonna sit up there and, and get on a record talking about I'm supposed to do this or do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just protecting myself, my family. That's it. You know, I, and I, I, if I'm with my homeboys. And some shit going on. I, I'm down, I'm with. We, it's, it is what it is. We we, we just got to do what we got to do. Facts. Um, but other than that, hey, I'm soft as Peter Cottontail. Shit, I ain't tripping. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you say uh, when you said uh, about your masters and and mm -hmm. how you when you was younger you was thinking a, a whole nother way. How how important is the script? in which we give to each other or the script in which we inherit or when we talk to our OG to get dope information. How important is that script to be able to be handed down to the next generation? How, how important is that? It's, it's very important so they don't go through the, uh, Such the shit, the, the, the things that we went through. It's very important so they don't go through uh, the things that we've been through, you know, even even with my kids, I tell them, I said, look, you, you, y'all talk to me like y'all think y'all slick or something or I'll slick. Everything that you done been through and gonna go through, I've been through it already. That's why I try to tell you mm. ahead of the game on certain situations that you're going through, this is how you gotta handle that situation. And I do that for artists, mm. I do that for my kids, and it's it's really important. Uh, to pass it down. I'm not sure how many guys do, but 
I even uh, DM'd Kodak Black when he was going through all the stuff before he went to jail. Mm. Him and uh, Baby Soldier. Okay. It was Kodak Black. Um, I reached out to actually I reached out reached out to Baby Soldier because he was in jail for murder, and him and Kodak Black they they was tight, you know. But this was actually before he went to jail for the murder situation, which he beat and he got out, and then he's back in jail for a violation, I think, baby soldier. And I told him, I said, look, talk to Kodak Black and have him call me. I want to talk to him because he don't have no, nobody trying to guide him in the right direction. So I reached out, and I reached out to Kodak Black, but he went to jail. I don't even know if he even seen it, but just me being from here, way on the West Coast, because I, I stay in tune with all the younger artists, all artists my age, whatever. I stay in tune, tune with everything. And uh, I, I was just, somebody got to say something to this dude. So I just reached out to Baby Soldier, then reached out to him and talked to both of them. And uh, Baby Soldier, he got it. You know, I was looking out for him while he was locked up, too. And... Uh, it just it's, it feels good to pass it down, and and Kodak is starting to get it mm. a little. He's starting to get it because right. I seen he started investing in in uh, real estate and and things like that, and uh, and just moving in a different direction a little. Even though he got had a dirty, uh, you know, um, he's still trying to move in the right direction by building, you know, building you know, wealth for the neighborhood that he came up in and, you know, making it possible for, for people there to have jobs and stuff like that. Gotta have it, yeah. So that's pretty dope. Gotta have that, too. Yeah. You know, that yeah. script's gotta be out there. I gotta ask you about your Raiders, man. Still going strong with the Raiders. I mean, I got major love for the Raiders. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I think we should have... Uh, I mean, I mean, I know it was a contract hear. thing with, with Carr. Carr hear. is my guy. I love Carr. It's but your guy? You got Jimmy G, though. <laughs> you yeah, like Jimmy yeah, G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's straight. He's Porn straight. He's, Jimmy. He, he got just got to stay Jimmy healthy. Jimmy got damn shit. He got to stay healthy. He got to stay healthy. Man, I like porn star Jimmy better than I like Derek. Nah, I'm man. down with it. Um, y'all got, got a super duper athlete and a wide receiver mm -hmm. in Adams, man. And yeah. It takes a certain arm to get it to him, man. Yeah, straight yeah. up. Yeah, I like y'all, yeah. man. I, I like y'all team. I ain't like how y'all went. Saying Aaron Rodgers was gonna come, that would have been that would have been legend. <laughs> they just shut Vegas down, dog. Yeah, it ain't enough Hiawasa in Vegas to fuck with. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that would have been legendary. That would have been different. Oh yeah. Can Vegas handle Aaron Rodgers though? Fresh out of Green Bay, like. Yeah, shit. That's the party capital. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to you earlier, and uh, y'all going on tour. I mm. got to think that on some of these tours, you're going to hit some of these barbecue spots in some of these oh, places? Oh, man, I'm going to every city I go to. I'm tapping in with every barbecue pit master there is. Y'all heard that? Barbecue. Yes, indeed. We coming straight live, we're straight live to you. You know what I'm saying? Warren G, the tour going, you know what I'm saying? What's the name of the tour again? It's called the High School Reunion oh, Tour. Man. Snoop Dogg, Too Short, Warren G. Uh, Wiz Khalifa and Burner. Oh no, we and and, and uh, DJ Drama. Oh yeah, and, it's gonna uh, be one of the. It's ones. gonna be a classic. We're gonna have a good time, and we're gonna show y'all life on tour. Hey, yes indeed, yes sir. Hey, we're gonna crack on this goddamn barbecue. I gotta ask, what's your favorite thing to smoke, and what's your favorite thing to grill? Favorite. Uh, you had to pick one. My favorite one. thing to smoke. Uh, uh it's brisket. Mm. Yeah, brisket. It, that's my favorite thing to smoke. And then as far as grilling, oh, wait. Pick uh, one. Can't pick them all. You're going to pick one. Uh, grilling, uh, mm. damn, let me see. Um, I say I, I really like to do uh, like uh, salmon, grilling it. Mm. Yeah, hot and fast, mm. you know, get the skin crispy on the bottom. Yes, indeed. Now, when are, is it safe to say with all of this that you set up today, right? Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that we're going to see the Warren G. Regulator cookbook someday? Definitely. Man. Sniff and Griffin's BBQ. Okay, what about the rubs <laughs> and the seasoning? The rubs and seasonings is, is already in action. Uh, 
That's on uh, Sniffing Griffins, BBQ.com. Sniffing Griffins. Y'all hear that? Sniffing Griffins. Sniffing Griffins, Griffins. BBQ.com. I got Sniffing my Griffin, sauces, Sniffing BBQ.com. Yes, indeed. Sniffing Griffins. What's Sniffing Griffins? You got to give us the insight. What's Sniffing uh, Griffins? Sniffing Griffins is my, uh, my rubs. I have an all-purpose uh, rub. I have an original. Uh, I have uh, smoky sauce. I have a... Damn. Uh, actually, the name is We Bring Heat, Smoking Me Out, and OG. My OG sauce and uh, it's really good sauces. Uh, it's a different, different flavor. Hold on, man, you jumping through everything. You got barbecue sauces too? Barbecue oh, these sauces. Are, oh, these are and sauces. Rubs. Yeah. So we need to see the whole shaboing boy. I need oh, to yeah. see the whole thing, thing. Don't tell I me got I got you. salad dressing and shit coming too. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything, KG. Yeah, the hot sauce that's coming. I got a yellow sauce coming. Ooh. I even have a, a seasoning salt coming. Uh, then I have flavor, some flavored salts that's coming as well, as well as uh, 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 plant-based mm. uh, seasonings. Yeah. I was going to ask you that, man. As a, as a chef, man, how much do you a have vegan, to... Vegan, for vegan. People. I was about to say, how much of the wave you got to you gotta pay attention to and, and, and implement a little bit of kind of like where food is going, everything's healthier, yeah. everything's plant-based? Oh, I'm, all, I'm, 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 line, I'm right up it? in there. I do... Uh, uh, portobello uh, burgers mm. is really good. Or I, I, I eat it without anything. I just love to grill them mm. or, or smoke them too. Uh, and just how juicy and flavorful they are. It tastes damn near like a steak. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got to get on that. Oh, yeah. Portobello mushrooms. Uh, take some olive oil or avocado oil, you know, rub it down and season it up. And get to cooking. You'll know when it's done. Man, you know what I want to do, man? One time when you go to Vegas and you, um, what do you call it when you go to the um, football games? Tailgate. Mm -hmm. When you tailgate at the Raiders game, mm -hmm. I want to I I be there. Oh, yeah. I want to be there for that. Yes, indeed. We're yes, going to have indeed. the cameras. We're going we're gonna to certify. We're going to chill right there. We might even watch. Do you watch the game right there or you go in? Uh, no, I go in, but... Mm. And so I'm sitting right there and watch it from right there, though? I have been. I have watched it um, before we, the Raiders and Chargers, when they used to battle. We'd, mm. we'd go up to the Chargers game about 100 deep. Oh, and shit. And we start with breakfast, lunch, and then we have another meal when people come out from the game, everybody that goes in, because some people just stay out. When they come back out, feed again. Everybody's a whole new batch of food. Is it... Are you, is it free? Are you, am I paying it's for it? It's free. All of us, Damn. it's our whole That's gotta crew. That's got to be a storm. Right? Our whole crew. You got the, the, the frying man. You got the barbecue man. You got the, uh, the uh, what was it, the breakfast man. What? We had, every, we had every type of food. We had it all right there. Well, breakfast, lunch, and a late, I guess, I don't want to say dinner, but meal after, after the game. Music going? It's a vibe? Oh, yeah, party. Oh, yeah. We there, we there, yo. Party. Put this down on the list. <laughs> Y'all heard it first. Oh, yeah. Man, thank you, dog. I appreciate Much you love. coming through, yes, man. Indeed. Well, thanks for having me, man. Down, man. Yes, nah. indeed. Yes, nah, indeed. Man, shout to you, your family, everybody, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Certified. Hey. Chat. When you're authentic to who you are, everything else will fall in place. People are gonna love, they're gonna hate, but you never know who's watching. Everything I do, I want it to be as original as it can be. Somebody did it like this, I'm gonna do it this much filler. Who comes back and rescues himself? This was our moment to let people know how we felt as a team. We've revolutionized this game with our influence.